What's up guys, welcome to Film Monger, the channel that brings you the latest short films, visual effects and everything film related. I'm your host Edge FM and following last week's episodes of Muzzle Flares, this week I'm going to be showing you how to create a headshot. So now that you've seen that perfect example of me putting a bullet through my friend's head, without further ado, let's jump straight into it. All right, so basically what we've done so far is we've imported our footage of my good friend pretending to get hit by a bullet. And as you can see, what we've done is we've used BlueTac as a tracking point for where the bullet hole will actually go. Now, if you don't know about tracking, please comment below and I can do a separate video teaching you how to track. But just for tutorial sake, I've actually gone ahead and tracked the blue tap already. Our next step is we actually um, we basically found a bullet wound and we went ahead and masked the bullet wound. So obviously click the bullet layer first and then mask around it the bullet hole. <clears throat> so now that we've done that, we have a perfect bullet hole right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn it into a 3D layer and we're going to position it over our actor's head. So we position it over the blue tack. We can also um, hit double M on our keyboard and just feather it out a little bit. You shouldn't see any edges basically. You can also take the mask expansion down just a tiny bit as well. You can see now we have a bullet hole. But the issue that we have, actually before we get into that, let's just um, parent it to our no 7. So as you can see, because it's parented now, it sticks to our actor's head. But the issue we have now is that the blue tap remains. So how do we get past that? What do we do? We duplicate our bottom footage. We're going to duplicate that and what we're going to do is actually we're going to go to the start of our timeline and we are going to go to time and then we're going to do freeze frame so we've frozen that and what we're going to do after that is we're going to take we're going to mask around our actor's forehead the left side now that we've masked around our actor's forehead you can see that if we take the bottom layer off you can only see brown skin so what we're going to do with that now is we are going to position this over the blue tack and we're going to we're going to use it only on the left side and we're going to do the same thing again duplicate our bottom footage again add another freeze frame time freeze frame there we go go back to composition we're going to solo the new layer that we just duplicated we're going to mask around the right side of our actor's forehead now. Yep. Unsolo it. As we've got our mask, same thing we've done before, we're going to position it over the blue tack yet again. So how does that look now? So as you can see, we've actually removed the blue tack, which is good. And don't forget to parent it to no 7. So now, as you can see, when we move forward in our timeline, the mask should stay over the blue tack. Now, we're not finished here. What we need to do is just mask, just feather our mask a little bit. If the blue tack starts showing, we can either change the position a little bit more to cover it a little bit more. But if the blue tack does insist on showing, just readjust your mask and that's it. Now the only reason I've covered the blue tack is because it's not guaranteed that the bullet hole would show straight away. So we can actually move our bullet hole layer forward and we can move it forward to the actual moment that he supposedly feels a bullet going through his skull. So what we do here is we 
we offset our bullet layer to come in at this time. This button over here tolls the mask and shape path visibility. So if you're not trying to see the mask around your selected layer, just click this and it will take it off. So as you can see, there we have a bullet hole up here. And what I'm going to do is just want to resize it a tiny bit. I just want to take it down a touch. I don't want it to be too big. I'm happy with that size, I believe. I think I am. As you can see, it looks like a bullet hole just appeared on his head, but it doesn't look the best now, does it? So what can we do to make it look a little bit better? So in that example, you can see there's blood that trickles down his head. And the only reason that was achievable is because we had a mask path set. So once it seemed like he'd been shot, what we would do is we'd put a keyframe on the mask path, which we just done, and then move forward in time a tiny bit. And then after that, remember to reselect your toggle mask and shape path visibility so you can actually edit the mask. And what we would do here is maybe just shift click one of the points, move it down a little bit, and just move it down so you can see the blood trickle down his forehead. Now, there is an issue. What is the issue? We can see part of the white part from the white hand that we masked the bullet hole from. So what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna go to normal and we're gonna change it to soft light. So now the white bits that was just there before are a bit darker. We can also add a curves adjustment to our bullet hole. There we go. And just darken it. We can just darken it a little bit. A little bit so it actually matches with the skin now how does that look i think that happened a bit too fast yep we were way too fast so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our keyframes and we're going to just push the last keyframe forward a little bit so it should extend the blood trickle a little bit yes i'm kind of happy with that speed so what we're also going to do is we're going to go to um we're going to highlight our keyframes then we're going to go to keyframe assistant Easy ease in, and we're gonna to go to easy ease out. Again, I'm not happy with the size of it, so I'm just gonna take it down a tiny bit more. What I would also do is I would add a motion blur on the bullet hole layer, and remember to put apply motion blur over here. As you can see, um, in our tracking, we've actually stopped tracking right over. Yeah, so what we can do is literally just chop that off and we can do that by holding alt and pressing the close bracket so once you do that it should just come off naturally and we would also want to do that on our I guess our skin masks well, I guess we can call them that as you see it should disappear now. So let's just review what we've done so far. Yes. So we can see bullet holes appeared. Blood has trickled down his face. He has dropped. The motion blur. This is why we applied motion blur. So we can see when he falls, it's also blurry as his head is blurry too. We can still make it a little bit better. So let's carry on. So again, I advise you to download um, Action Essentials. There's a few good, a few good elements that we could use. Um, for instance, this blood splatter. gory but we can edit it to make it a little bit more realistic so what we're going to do is we're going to import that straight in as well we're going to move it so it aligns so it's aligned with the actual bullet hole we're also going to free, make it a 3d layer we're going to position it where our bullet hole is but what we are going to do now is we're going to delete part of the start basically. We don't need like a blood patch that's there. So let's just move forward in time a little bit. What we want to do is just take the splash. 
a little bit of the splash. So yes, anyway, let's parent that to 07 as well. As you can see, it moves, but yes, it does not look realistic at all. So we can also change the blending mode. So it takes in a little bit of a darker color. So I'll change it to soft light. Again, what I like to do is apply motion blur. And the thing about this is that you might not see it after this, but it's there and that's what matters. So we're going to press play just to see our progress and see how it looks. As you can see, you can see there's a bit of a blood splatter. But here again, the issue is that it's a bit slow, isn't it? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to time remapping, enable time remapping. And we're going to go to the end keyframe and pull it in a little bit. So what that should do is actually speed up the animation. So again, when we press play now, yes, I really do like that. And lastly, lastly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the bullet hole. Let me just take the blood off first. I'm going to go back to the bullet hole and this is what I decided to do because I thought it was a bit weird how the bullet hole just appears. I mean, I've never seen someone get shot in the head, so I don't know how it actually looks, but I'm guessing it wouldn't just appear straight away. It would kind of open up as it's a wound. So what I did was I went to the mask expansion, bullet hole, I keyframed it and I pushed that forward. So that's the original size it was at. Then I went to the mask expansion and I took it all the way down. So there is no bullet hole. Now the bullet hole should basically open up. Again, this is another personal preference. I just don't like the way that the bullet hole appears on his head, which is why I've done that. It still looks like it appears, but it just makes me feel bad to be honest. <laughs> so here we have the bullet hole opening, blood trickling down, and our actor falls out of scene. Let's add the blood back on. Let's just look at it and see how it looks now. All right. Hmm. What I will do is I'll just offset the blood one more frame later, or one or two more frames later. Let's see how that looks now. And there we go. That's how we created our headshot. So thank you for watching another episode of our Filmmonger Show. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you learned something. Please comment, share, subscribe and like. Let us know if you didn't understand anything and we'll be sure to help you. Goodbye.